three new War Cry or four new War Cry sets are here. <laughs> If you're wondering what to get next for the Wave 2 Warcry release, or just trying to pick up some dope minis for Age of Sigmar if you play Slaves to Darkness, Chaos, well, we got you covered here. So there's three new warbands out this week, which concludes all of the previewed Warcry warbands to date. Now, we know there's two more in the rulebook. One of them seems to be some sort of Chaos Ogres or something like that. And if I was a betting man, I would say we see those around the first of the year time-ish. And we also got a new set of terrain to use for the Warcry game. So, let's. Uh, all these sets are $50 in the Shattered Storm Vault. I believe is 90 or 95 I might have to fact check that one real quick. It's $90. And uh, we'll, go, we'll break that down and go over the value on that. And take a closer look at all these sprues here. And put together one of the miniatures. Let's talk about the new terrain set real quick. So last week we saw the Corpse Rack Mausoleum, which seems to be a good value for what you get in it. And you get the terrain cards and the board and the tokens, wound counters and all that sort of stuff in there, which is really good. This week we've got the Shattered Storm Vault, which is very familiar terrain because we just saw this come out for the Dominion of Sigmar. Actually, let's talk about some values before we start looking inside the box. So real quick, this is what you get in there. You get the standard board. Uh, but it's going to be more folded because this isn't the, the full size box like Warcry. So it's going to be folded in extra time like a game board uh, in Monopoly or something like that. And here's a breakdown of the terrain you get in here. And why this is important is because I want to take a look at the value. Not only do you get the game board, the tokens, and the terrain cards, uh, the deployment cards rather. I think deployment, terrain. I get the terms confused because I actually haven't played a game of this quite yet. But it doesn't mean I can't break it down and tell you some values and some cool stuff about what I see and what I would pick up if I was starting out, basically, given the information that everybody has readily readily accessible to them. So let's take a look at the Storm Vault terrain right here. So you're going to get two identical sets with two of the sprues, which I'm going to show you here in a second, of the broken pillars and stuff. And then these extra little um, flame can uh, cloisters and some ramps and the little Gozar, the Gozarian, uh, Sigmar Hound, Griff Hound things right there. Now let's jump over to the GW site for a sec. Now let's take a look at some of these values. So here is the two sets. Well, actually, there's three. There's this uh, four. There's the Time Worn Ruins and this round thingy right here, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk focus more on this Endurance Storm Vault, which, if you remember what I just showed you right there, you get literally all of this down to this point. You get an extra one of these little um, deuses, we'll call it. You don't get this stuff here, which actually slots into each other. So if you have two of these, you can actually slot them into each other, or two of these, you can make a larger uh, kind of um, plateau sort of piece right here, rectangular. Um, actually, I guess it'd be more square. Regardless, you also get the destroyed columns and this little Sigmar dude around the front, which also comes in here, which is completely separate sprue and the little uh, cloister thingies. But what I'm saying is, this is $90 for the set. This, plus an extra one of these, with the same amount of little ruined spires, is only 90 in this set. So it seems like this is a good value if you wanna just pick up terrain, because you get about the same amount of stuff as 160 bucks in this box, plus the board, plus the wound tokens, plus your cards, right? So, I mean, you might not get this little Sigmar Duder and you might not get these large, slightly larger little terrain pieces right here, but I feel like sacrifices can be made for $50 retail. Now, jumping back into the terrain itself, it comes in a very ginormous box, not unlike the Quartz Wrap most of them. You're going to get all the wounds, uh, the tokens and things. This is the board and like I said, it's going to come more folded, but it's really cool looking. It doesn't look as blue as it does in the pictures and stuff, but uh, it's got this blasted kind of back with uh, some really cool browns and ochres in it. And then this all folds out and we don't really need to fold that whole thing out because you kind of get the idea because you've seen it. And then all of the sprues are going to be in here. And we showed you all the stuff for when we unboxed the Dominion of Sigmar train. But maybe more importantly, what I wanted to show you was the pack of the cards that you get right here. And like I said, I haven't even played a game yet. I haven't done a demo game. But what I noticed on this is that they kind of tell you how to set up this terrain. So maybe it's like a deck. And I'm sure somebody can chime in in the comments. You probably just shuffle it up and you draw one of these. And then that's kind of uh, the thing you play. And these are the ones that actually come in here. And then these perhaps... Are, looks like it's paired with stuff in the starter maybe. I'm not exactly sure, but those look like the, the ones that come in the starter set. So maybe it gives you kind of a, a couple of different options for like different things. 
uh, that you can do right there. Maybe you do have to mix them together with the starter. I'm not exactly sure. I'm just looking at value and what you get for the dollar. And it seems like if you're starting out or you just want some Sigmar terrain on the cheap, you know, relatively cheap, it's all it's all expensive hobby. $90 doesn't seem too bad at retail price. Plus, we all know there's discounts out there. So first out of the gate is going to be the Unmade, that Saw 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to infinity looking a warband here. And there's like, what is that, eight, nine, nine models in this warband. And I think that's the one that, that kind of sticks in everybody's psyche. And they look great. If you're like really into, hey, I want chaos, like <laughs> Mark of the Beast and all that, this might be the warband for you, I feel like. So it's going to come with some bases. Uh, there's a lot of bases here. A lot of different size bases. We'll talk about that in a second. You're going to get the abilities cards, the fighter cards. There's their abilities. Rumor they're going to come in each uh, language so you really only need the one that pertains to you although some people have been cutting these up and using them as just like pop-up stand-up dudes to play their games I don't know I mean I feel like either that or cutting this out as a proxy while you get your stuff together might be a cool idea socially acceptable I don't know not so much but kudos on people for thinking outside the hobby box on that one then three sprues of models right here and the instruction manual as well which we'll take a look at because there isn't a whole lot of customization on these models there's your three size bases remember they invented that 25 millimeter size base for warcry you're going to get uh mr saw four right here he's going to come in with no customization actually i don't think any of these have customization now that i look at it i'm kind of worried about this uh this organics there's a lot of organics right here in this computer slice i'm wondering if the gaps are going to be kind of hidden under this rope and we'll take a look at that we'll probably put this guy together and everybody else is just kind of standard like arm slots, head swaps, the things we do expect gaps for the most part that I can tell. And then right here, you've got this color cleverly hidden uh, groin robe slash chain that's going to kind of cover up those gaps. So G-Dub's definitely good at uh, kind of hiding the gaps and then all the little duders on the back as well. Uh, here's the sprues. So again, you're looking at that really, really sweet multi-part kind of build. Uh, the detail is really, really incredible. I mean, you're really getting in there with all this, the leather straps, the chains, and all sorts of different things right there. Trying to get the light on it for you. I think for the most part, we got some got some good light. And, I mean, just all the stitch work from the chains, all that stuff right there. It looks really, really fresh. So these guys would not be out of place in any uh, Age of Sigmar army or anything like that if you wanted to play. Which you can uh, if you play Slaves of Darkness, of course. And then here's Mr. Saw 3 himself, looking fresh on his little stilts with his robes dangling everywhere. You can see a little bit of the gapping. Uh, and I, th I think it's very clever how they did that in there as the stitching of uh, what I assume to be, you know, human skin or something. <laughs> but it's very clever how they did it. Just be, you know, be really careful. There's a lot of dangly bits here when you put it together. But, I mean, once you get some paint on this guy, he is going to look fresh because... Uh, this is a really cool model. You just got to throw some basing on it and paint him up. Oh, one other thing too. He is on a 40 mil base here. So he's kind of chunky compared to, what is that? The 28 uh, that we saw with uh, the other warband, Johnny Three Hands right there that came out last week. So he is not only taller because he has that, that crazy stride going on right there, but also uh, on a bigger size base as well. Next up are the Splintered Fang these guys are cool looking i don't know if they're elves i think they're just duders that have that kind of uh, poseidon theme but also like poison snakes almost a little alpha legiony for those of you out there that, that do the 40ks inside the box again you're gonna get uh the fighter card right there you don't have to use the one that pertains to you and all the little uh individual cards as well or the ability cards and the fighter cards rather then base size not too many ridiculous size bases right here uh, it's just a, the standard three, I think, that most of the warbands were coming with. The sprues themselves and then the instructions. And jumping into that, there you can see the three standard size sprues. And then you've got uh, the True Blood, the one and only True Blood right here. I think we'll build him. Uh, Spirit Caller, Pure Blood. And again, not a whole lot of options with these. This one here, you're gonna have uh, either a barbed whip or a spear and shield. And then for the venom blood, dueling blades and blade with barbed whip. So a couple different options, but not that true customization that we've seen with you know the stuff out of like Necromunda and stuff. And then the last two here on the back as well. And you can put the extra uh, stakes on there if you want. So a little bit of accessories, a little bit of customization, but not too crazy. 
Sprue wise, these guys look great. I mean, all of the scale work, the extra, the netting, just the swords, the different options, just the length of the whip and the way it is crafted to actually, you know, kind of hold together right here. It's pretty crazy the amount of detail and things they can do here. There's going to be a lot of computer slices that we're going to have to be kind of careful for, but I'm hopeful. You know, I've seen like this is basically an arm. This is the middle of the arm, but they it looked like they used some of the trinket to kind of socket it in. And the last sprue right here, a better look at some of all that scale work, designs on the shield, even the handle grips on the daggers right there, and the scales on the snake itself. Just great looking stuff. They're, they're definitely excelling at uh, the design of character level minis, but on a squad basis. And here's the model we were talking about. Now, the detail looks great, don't get me wrong. Uh, plenty of room on the underneath of the scale cloak here. Got the cool Poseidon trident and that very gladiatorial like, but still that pop culture kind of look to it right here. Now you can see the gaps going down this piece and around the corner. That actually isn't glued, that was just kind of snap fit in. It kind of shifted, um, that was my fault. So uh, don't let that dis, uh, dis sell you on this model or anything like that. That was just a bad assembly on my, my, on my part right there that I just noticed it, it had slid. But all the other gaps went together pretty well. And up here, or where is it? Right here, this was pretty precarious, but like I said, they use a little bit of this, uh, this charm, this bracelet, bracer kind of charm uh, to lock in and attach it to the arm. So great design work, just not very good assembly on my part uh, of these miniatures here. And then here is how he compares, I think it's a he, um, a 30, 32, I think we're a 32 right here, to uh, Mr. Unmade Software. Five, six, seven, eight. And last but certainly not least is the Corvus Cabal, which I think might be one of the more exciting and fan favorite of the Warbands based on uh, that dude right there, which I think is a Shriek, Shrike Talon. So very cool, another nine model Warband here. And getting a better look at that, we got some 25s, got some 28s, got a 40 in there. Lots and lots of bases. Here's the abilities card, fighter card. Well, fighter card for one of them. And the sprues themselves, boom. Now, as far as the instructions, let's take a look at those. There are a couple of multi-parts uh, options here. There's your base sizes. The Shadow Piercer doesn't look too hard, but then when you get over to Mr. Shrike Talon, the one that looks uh, so cool, and we've seen uh, all those pictures of them all painted up, there's a lot going on here, a lot of different slices. Look at this like rib cage sort of front torso slice, and then you've got <laughs> all the feathers, the wings. Um, the one of the claw arms here. I don't even know what's going on with this. This is gonna, this is super hobby hard mode. Hopefully it goes together just fine, and we don't uh, punt on that one like we did uh, <clears throat> on the last uh, the last build there. Uh, Cobbleus and Cobbleus with spear. So a couple different options, and then a sneak. Oh no, not this page. And then a couple there with familiar and with spear. I like that posing of that lady right there. Very very cool looking. Then a couple of the other guys, and then there's options for this. I guess it's a some sort of poison dart. And they sneak in another one right here uh, for this guy too. And then the look of the whole warband and the computer render. Now taking a look at the sprues themselves, you're gonna see once again, uh, great looking stuff here. Look at the feather detail on all this. Slices for days, we already talked about that, but the bone scythe, uh, the spikes, the poison darts. Now I don't know, and the little claw talons right here. I don't know if these are gonna be something you're gonna have to be careful about. You know, sometimes little antennas and claws and things kind of break off. So definitely they've gotten better at designing them. It doesn't seem like you push on this and it's gonna come off. But then again, my Death Watch Space Marines would uh, have a word with me about all the antennas I've broken off of their helmets that appeared to be in, you know, sturdy and in good condition. So only time will tell on these guys, but obviously <laughs> be very, very cautious when you're putting them in foam or not putting them in foam. Of course, we've done a couple tutorials on here on how to magnetize them and put them in plastic cases. That one's always fun, and for models like this, that might be a good solution for you right there, and they're, they're pretty cheap uh, in order to do. So there's the sprues themselves, and here he is, Mr. Birdman. Birdman! On his little bird stilts <laughs> with his razor talons and crazy, crazy posing right there. Uh, this guy looks dope. Like, why, why don't we have cool stuff like this in Warhammer 40K? You can see a little slice down the back there, but like I said, this thing is like... Uh, patchwork orange of slices and dices. It does go together very well. Obviously, if you have some gaps, 
uh, using liquid glue or Vallejo plastic putty is always a great solution if you just can't deal with that and you want to fill it uh, give it a little bit of time and then you can just uh, it dry as hard as nails and just scrape away the excess with uh, a hobby knife or uh, the little seam scraper from GW there but great looking model let's see how he compares to saw 4 there he is they're both big large and in charge on 40 mil bases and then Mr. Spider Fang, Splinter Fang is like, hey guys, I'm important too. I was almost put together correctly. But there they are, this week's lineup of war bands for Warcry. Thank you very much for watching this unboxing review of ah of the new kits. I just dropped them. That was my favorite. <laughs> Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.